close this thing out, let's welcome Victor Harris back to the stage. Victor. All right, uh, so this next selection was inspired by Abby's talk. Uh, it's called, Oh God, You Devil, part one. Dear God, I want to thank you for this body you've given me, but I do have one or two issues with its layout and capabilities. I mean, if we are, as your adherents would have me believe, your favorite species created in your image, then your imagination must have been exhausted after creating sunrises, sunsets, the ocean, its floor, and the majestic mountains. They are beautiful works of art, after all, but your imagination must have been expended after creating creatures to swim in the deep, birds to decorate the skies, and animals to populate the earth. They are awe inspiring in every iteration, so I can only assume that your imagination was taxed when it came to creating my kind. Or perhaps the parts bin was empty because these eyes you've endowed in me and mine are nice. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're serviceable, but they are nowhere near your best work. Sharks have clear covers to keep the eyes safe when attacking prey. The eyes of the octopus don't have the same blind spot as those of mammals and the images aren't flipped. Hawks can see greater distances, greater distances with more clarity and insects have compound eyes that allow them to see in six directions at once. While we, your supposed favorite species, stub, stub toes in poorly lit rooms. Our rods struggling in low light situations, leaving us susceptible to injury and predation. We can only see in we can only see in black and white in our periphery. Our cones can only perceive a limited number of colors in a limited number of colors in the spectrum and unnecessary nerves and veins occupy the ocular surface, leaving them vulnerable to irritation and damage by the tiniest of your insects. God, this body you've given we suffers from one or two minor deficiencies. For instance, we communicate, eat, drink, and breathe using the same faculties, which almost makes it a certainty that we will one day choke in our attempt to acquire sustenance. Did you love the dolphin and the whale more than man? Are fishes and amphibians more favored by their creator than the humble mammals from which we've descended? The circulatory and respiratory systems of insects are so simple as to almost be inspired. Did you design them early on in the process? I mean, there are more body plants and insects than there are people on this earth. Did you print them fresh off your first cup of coffee or whatever your drug of choice may be? Because I think after seeing some of your creatures, it is safe to assume that you were on some sort of hallucinogen. And speaking of circulation and respiration, why don't we use all of the oxygen we take in? And why are we land-based animals on a planet that is two-thirds water, where the oceans, once so teeming with life that you could only see heartache and strife, your favorite creations, and so limited them to the land masses? This spine you've hung my mass on contains a, com contains a curve so complex that at some point in my life, I will have back problems. Whereas if we were in the ocean, that might not be. The same can be said for hips, ankles, and knees. And dear God, why can't I regenerate limbs? I'm not asking for an arm or a leg such as a salamander is able to do. But if the common lizard can regrow a tail, I don't think a pinky toe is too demanding of me. And dear God, why is my lifespan so short? Why is my lifespan so short, only doubling in the last century thanks to science-based medicine, but still falling far short to the alligator and the crocodile, the tortoise and the parrot? Do these creatures, not purported to be your favorites, have more purpose than man? And what is the purpose of cancer? Why do our cells suddenly go crazy and attempt to kill off the body that contains them? In our appendix, which was once necessary to break down such fibrous materials as grass and hardy green vegetables, is now a repository for necessary bacteria and is just hanging around waiting to kill us, a ticking time bomb in our abdomen. I'm running out of time, dear God, but not complaints. I do have one or two more for you to address. My party center centrally located, is in too close proximity at times sharing the same facilities as my sewage center, where there are no city planners up there in heaven for you to consult, where we given whatever body plan was left laying around, dear Lord. 
Will that explain the obsequious DNA that still occupies our cells? Is your quality control worse than the McDonald's? Never mind. Don't answer that last question. There's no need. I only need to look around at all the different religious denominations that claim to speak your truth to know the real truth. I humbly await your answer, dear God, if you can be bothered. But can you do me one favor? Keep your believers from, t keep your believers from attempting to speak for you because they are all offering a different answer, each incompatible with the other, and attempting to disprove six billion ideas of you is really beginning to piss me off. Thank you.